Um, I wanted to report again about a story that I reported on, um, I think, late last year already. Uh, but uh, it, 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 the, the significance of this story has just grown, uh, and I don't think it's gotten a lot of press. Do you remember last summer, the panic? I mean, the real panic about the coming energy crisis that Europe was going to face, that the, the people were going to die of, of, of cold, that uh, uh, Europe was going to run out of electricity, people could not afford to heat their homes, there wouldn't be enough gas to heat their homes, that, that you know, this was a, an energy crisis on the scale we had never seen before, and so on, and on, and on, and on. Well, I told you, uh, you know, early on um, that this didn't look like this was actually happening, that indeed um, uh, prices of European natural gas seem to be coming down from their unbelievable peak in August, uh, August of 2022, that in spite of the fact that Europe cut off complete, completely all supplies from, uh, sorry, natural gas supplies from Russia, uh, the Europeans had uh, managed to get alternative sources. The Germans had put their, their productive capabilities uh, to work in building uh, LNG facilities and getting uh, natural gas from Qatar and from the US and from a, a, a bunch of other places around the world that had LNG, that Norway was pumping uh, more natural gas into Europe than, than typical, uh, that uh, Azerbaijan and, and Kazakhstan were pumping natural gas through Turkey into Europe, uh, and that, that actual prices of, of natural gas uh, came down dramatically. So even though it hit a peak of close to $350, natural gas, gas came down to $100 already by October, and is today at $50. So from $350 to $50, that is, a, what is that, an 80% drop in the price of natural gas from peak hysteria. Now, part of that is that you got a mild winter. But part of it is also the fact, as I told you at the time, that all these uh, liquefied natural gas deals were being cut, all these alternative ways were being cut, and the fact that Europeans conserved. They just used a little bit less um, without people dying, without massive uh, uh, you know, hits uh, to everybody. I mean, natural gas is getting so cheap now that it will soon be replacing coal again as a means by which to um, produce electricity. So not just will it be used for heating, but it'll also be used for electricity. So uh, it's unlikely to drop a lot below 50 because demand now will rise uh, for electricity production. Uh, in the meantime, I think uh, Europe will spend the next few months uh, filling up ga their gas reserves for next uh, winter. They'll probably build up more LNG plants. I know they have a deal coming up with Israel and Egypt to start shipping natural gas from the oil fields in the, from the gas fields in the Mediterranean um, uh, to add to the supply. I think they're going to find that there are other places in the world eager to ship natural gas to Europe once they get all the uh, planned LNG facilities up where they can uh, download uh, LNG. And this, this means that uh, Europe can uh, hopefully uh, completely eliminate its dependency on Russian natural gas. Uh, again, the, the new pipelines being considered uh, from places like Kazakhstan uh, into Europe through Turkey, all kinds of other means uh, by which to circumvent Russia. Uh, this war is going to be a massive, massive disaster, um, massive, massive disaster. Uh, uh, for Russia, because its its uh, capabilities, its its ability to export uh, natural gas is going to curtail building a, a natural gas pipeline to uh, China or to India uh, is going to take years um, uh, if they want to replace the flow of natural gas uh, elsewhere. All right, uh, so um, yeah, there you go. It's, uh, it, you know, another catastrophe averted. I, I mean, one of the things you realize, you know, when you follow, if you follow the news for decades, as I have, is while bad things happen, and really, really bad things sometimes happen, um, you know, COVID's a good example. I, the response to COVID is an even better example. Um, you know, wars happen. The war in Ukraine is, is a good example. It is often the case, and, and I'd say most of the time, when people catastrophize, 
it's false. The, the, the hysteria, the catastrophizing, I mean, the balloon is a small example of, of this idea. Uh, we as a species and people today, I don't think it's we as a species, I think people today, uh, when you abandon strict, being strictly rational, it's very easy to get emotional about any negative thing and to turn that negative thing into a, 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 a coming catastrophe, a coming disaster. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.